guys, welcome back to Life Learners. Happy Monday, I believe this is gonna go live Monday. If it isn't, I apologize. Um, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are staying stay safe with all this coronavirus and COVID-19 um, issues that we're having. Uh, make sure you wash your hands for 20 seconds. It's just a public service announcement from Life on the Wrist. Um, what we're gonna be discussing today is a watch release that, it's not a new watch, but it's a new variation on this watch. Uh, the watch is the uh, Grubel Force QP uh, Equation. Um, or a uh, equation. Um, this is a really cool watch that I thought I would bring to light for you guys because it's very interesting. Um, it, it definitely takes a, a, a stab at redefining what time really is. Um, so I think it'd be interesting for you guys to know about it. Just so you guys know, this is not a watch review. This is not me having the watch and showing you how it works. It's not like that. So if you are looking for a video like that on this Google 4 scene, then um, this is not the video for you, but you should stay tuned because this is just going to be me giving you some initial thoughts on the watch, what I think about it, what I think about it from a horological standpoint, and how impactful it can be on the way in which we look at time. So that's what the video is going to be today. But before we get into that, and I say it every single video, make sure be sure to subscribe to the channel if you like these types of videos or you've seen other videos from us and you really like them. Also, don't forget to smash the like button for us for this group of group of 4C. Make sure it gets the love it deserves. Um, so um, this watch um, already was released. It was released actually, um, I believe, at, in 2015. Um, but it has a really cool new desired color that I think is definitely going to capture a lot of people who are interested and in, perhaps in this market. So for those of you who uh, don't really know Grubel Forsey, uh, Grubel Forsey was actually founded in 2004 by Robert uh, Grubel and Stephen Forsey. Or Forsey. Um, and the company is based in... Uh, Le Chat de France in uh, the canton of Neuchâtel, which is in the French part of Switzerland. This is where a lot of uh, watch companies are actually based out of. Uh, Group of Forces is known for creating extremely high quality um, watches or high-end watches um, and um, doing this through high-end watchmaking techniques. And most of the time, not exclusively, but most of the time their watches are based off of a turbulent escapement. So that's kind of their uh, that's how one could define Group of 4C as, a, as where they stand within the market. So the watch that we're discussing, like I said, is the QPI Equation. And um, it was originally released at SIHH in uh, 2015. Um, and it's, I, it's considered one of the most complicated watches actually ever made. Um, it's not the most complicated watch ever made, but it's definitely got a lot of complications that, um, that, that, that uh, can be used. Um, the idea of this watch is to know exactly um, what time you are in, in both um, time and space with where you set this watch. Um, so looking at the watch a little bit more um, specifically to give you some spe specifications of this watch, um, the watch is essentially a 44 millimeter um, watch in red gold and has this really beautiful chocolate brown colored dial, which in a way kind of is reminiscent of faux patina, which has become extremely popular within the watchmaking industry. But I think this um, this kind of chocolate brown dial is something that people are desiring right now. And it doesn't look like it's being patina. It, it doesn't look like faux patina. It's a little bit more of like a modern take on this color. So um, chocolate brown dial, which is extremely desired. And then you have applied Arabic numerals, which again is extremely desired within um, watch collecting right now. The case itself has po uh, is polished on some parts as well as the lugs, which are polished, but there are some on the sides of the case that, parts of the case that are actually brushed, which I think is a nice contrast for, for this watch. Um, like I said, it's one of the most complicated, um, one of the most complicated watches on the market right now. Just to run through the complications really quickly, um, you're gonna have hours, minutes, seconds, so general time um, for, for where you set this. Then it has a 24 hour turbulent, which is obviously uh, a staple of what is included in group of 4C watches. There's also a 24 hour indicator so you can tell if it's day, uh, if it's early in the day or, um, or later at night. Um, it, it also has a power reserve indicator. It has a perpetual calendar. Uh, it has a mode selector display. And on the back you have an equation of time and the year that you are in. So this is a hand wound in-house movement from Google 4C that has a 72 hour power reserve. So plenty of time there. Um, compared to a lot of other watches, so a relatively large um, uh, mainspring. Uh, so just walking through those complications, I guess your your initial thoughts are probably, that is just so much watch. I don't really see how I'm going to use it. And that's totally understandable. I think, you know, if you look at, if you think of time as a, as a concept, 
really your phone tells you what time it is, it can tell you what day it is, you don't really need to know all those other added uh, features. Um, so uh, from that perspective, I can see how it might just be overcomplicated for complication's sake. Uh, I think that's something that's occurred in recent years where companies have made watches and made them as complicated as possible just to say this is the most complicated watch ever. But I think Google Force is a little bit different. This specific watch is a little bit different. Um, first, I think um, it is from an independent watch uh, maker who's applying really um, class, uh, really high-end watchmaking skills in order to create this watch, which I think is um, a lot different than just um, trying to find a uh, mass-produced movement and modifying it in order to add specific complications to it. So I think from that perspective, um, this watch is a little bit different uh, from that trend of just making complicated watches. But and So if you get past the fact that it's not just complication for complication's sake, you can really understand the true purpose of this watch, and that is to understand where you are in time and space, and to understand, you know, oh, it's, it's night time right now, uh, or, um, you know, you have your perpetual calendars, so you literally have the date, the entire date on your wrist. Um, so once you get past that, it, you, you can kind of create a little bit more of an emotional connection with this watch in order to understand where you are exactly within that, that within time. Um, looking at the dial of the watch, because that's obviously the first thing that you're gonna look at when you actually look at the dial of the watch. Um, having this chocolate brown dial, like I said, is reminiscent of faux patina, but it's not because I think with the, the way in which the dial is laid out with that tourbillon at, at 10 o'clock and and the, the, the modern way in which each of the components of the watch has been added to the dial, I think the chocolate brown kind of, it, it gives it almost like a modern flair to it. I will say chocolate brown dials have become extremely popular. It's kind of like the trend with blue dials. I think chocolate brown is also going to kind of continue to take off over the next couple of years. Um, but it is kind of romantic and, and brings you back to a time where, of watchmaking um, where you, you um, obviously didn't have patina then, but you can imagine that watch kind of flourishing into, into patina. Um, I really love another part of this watch that I like. One, obviously the tourbillon, which is at 10 o'clock, which is obviously typical of Google 4C watches. But another part of this watch that I like are the little red accents that are located, you know, a little bit just sparsely around the dial. I think this is a really cool little feature because it kind of brings, kind of um, gets your attention quickly and then you take it away to a different part of the watch. Um, so I really like that. I also like the fact that when you turn it over, you have the equation of time and the year. Um, I like watches that have um, complications on both sides. It's extremely hard to make movements that have complications on both sides. Um, it takes a lot more, <laughs> more time and effort. And obviously this took a lot of years of research and development by a group of force to, to make this. But I kind of like that feature. I think that can be overdone. I think some watches shouldn't have as many complications um, on both sides. Again, complication for complication's sake might fall into that. But when you turn this watch over, it really is beautifully laid out and it isn't, um, it isn't aggressive or in your face or anything like that. So I really like that. Um, so in my opinion, I don't think this is a watch that is uh, complication for complication's sake. I like the way in which it's uh, laid out. I like the contrast for this specific watch. I like the contrast between the brand, that brown dial and the red gold. I think that really plays into each other really nicely. And obviously Group of Force is, a, is an independent watch company that I like to, um, I like to bring people's attention to because independent watch companies are the ones that are going to end up moving watchmaking forward for our generation, in my opinion. That's why we like companies like MBNF, like Google Forcey, because they're doing things in an ingenuitive uh, way that will um, will be re representative of watchmaking during this era. So one of the reasons why I really love uh, independent watchmaking, but also um, this specific watch. So I'll be sure to make sure there's videos and pictures for you guys to see these watches um, and throughout this video, um, I hope you guys enjoyed my little summary here of, of the watch and what I think about it. Um, we have a blog post on our website, like we always do for every single one of our videos, where we kind of summarize um, our thoughts on this. So be sure to check that out. Also, if you haven't already, and I said it in the beginning of the video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video if you enjoyed it. Also, check us out on our um, on our uh, socials: uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok. Um, we, we're pretty active on there and actually I sometimes gather information on those socials in order to um, figure out what I want to make in these videos or uh, um, 
enhance uh, some of the videos that I make. So as an example, I put on a poll on the uh, HM10, uh, the Bulldog. I don't know if you've seen our video on that. If you didn't, it was released last week. Um, we asked people what they thought about it. And ironically, I absolutely loved it. But ironically, the um, my Instagram followers actually, it was more 50-50. Some people, about 50% liked it, some 50% didn't. So um, that was an interesting um, bit of information that kind of added some, some insight into the market. Um, for that video so super helpful for me uh, and also i mean who doesn't like watches on your social medias um so be sure to check us out there and with that said guys i hope you enjoyed this video and until next time